Welcome to this end-to-end -end demonstration. We will highlight key processes in managing the life cycle of an enterprise service. The demonstration shows a critical email exchange service and its interactions with self service, support and incident, collaboration, collaboration and change, software asset management, automation, project management, cloud deployment and governance, and employee engagement. This morning, I sat down with a nice cup of coffee, got ready to read my emails, when suddenly an error message came up on my screen. I proceeded to look for help in our service portal. Looks like there's news about an exchange outage. The exchange email service is currently unavailable in the US East region. I wonder if that's affecting me. I'm not sure, I'm gonna ask the virtual agent. Hello, Max, I can't connect to email this morning. Are you having problems connected to Exchange? Yes. This is the error. Here's a screenshot. Let's see if you can help me. Oh, it looks like a solution has already been provided for my request. The Exchange service is currently down. Okay, good to know it's not a problem on my machine. Let's see now how the service desk is managing this issue. I'm logged in now as an agent. I see here a request queue, and looks like a lot of people are reporting issues with email connection problems. Here's a request that came in. Our system is smart. It even has identified an IP address that is linked to a specific device or server. A request has already been categorized, has already been associated with a specific service, and the ticket has even been assigned to the proper group. In addition, we can see that this particular request has already posted a solution. This is accomplished through automation that is part of the virtual agent definition for supporting email. In this case, we have a task plan that is checking for the availability of our current service. Now, in general, the agents can find further solutions. Here we have an incident about exchange emails not being able to be accessed. I can link that so that it's directly associated with the support request. Similarly, the agent could find other related information that could help with the context of this particular request. Or I could look at articles from Knowledge, uh, link them to the request, and the solution will be automatically sent back. A device has already been identified, and we can see more information about that CI. And I can look at the impact where I can see my server that is down, the various connections that it has all the way up to the exchange service. Here in my device view, I can see relevant information that has been discovered. I know where it is located, the type of operating system that is running on it, and of course, all kinds of details about the specific hardware. I can also find the discovered topology and the related records showing us the processes to this particular CI. Let's look at how collaboration plays an important role this is the incident that has been created. I can also have a major incident team where specific agents, experts can be added to collaborate. And I can do that within our environment or collaborate in a different tool. Here in Teams, I have a thread with all of the experts working on this incident. Somebody has uh, posted a message. We need to generate a new license key certificate for exchange service. Back on the incident side, we can see that all the discussions related to resolving this incident are being tracked here. All the collaboration information is therefore preserved. Let's take a look now at how configuration and change management. I can create a new change from this particular incident. And within the change creation, I will select to create a new exchange certificate model and automation for this kind of change. My new change already has information that classifies it and assigns it. We can see that our change will undergo a standard workflow. I'll also have assistance in scheduling the change. Can find an appropriate change window based on the amount of time to implement. I can now proceed to plan and execute my change. And this can include the creation of specific workflow tasks some can be manual, some can be automated, 
we can see that under execution, there is already an automation subflow that will generate and replace my certificate automatically. But first, I can note also that my change record gives me all the details of the involved CIs that will be affected by the implementation. I can look at the impact to understand exactly when I bring this server down, what other services in addition to Exchange might be affected. My broader change calendar can show me all of the planned changes for the Exchange service, as well as the details on each of those changes. For broader information, I can even do a global search for anything related to Exchange and find that I have changes planned, I have articles from knowledge management, I have incidents that are open, support requests that have come in from self-service portal. Let's drill into one of these existing changes. This is an upgrade that was done to one of the Exchange servers. And change analytics actually give me information about the success or failure, as well as the risk associated with this kind of change. I can see the list of failed similar changes, as well as any successful ones if those were available. Another very valuable tool is this report of change analytics where I can look at success rates, the amount of standardization, as well as the automation that has been taking place. That I can improve my success rate overall by making a focus improvement in changes related to the exchange service. That right now, I have a 79% success rate in performing changes to this service. You can also see that I've only been automating about 50% of them, yet I can have a higher success rate if I implement further automation. Let's take a look at how software asset management can also play a role. Our change will produce a new certificate, but it looks like it requires us to provide an exchange license key. I'll navigate to my software asset management menu to find out the details that I'm looking for. I can see reports related to the current compliance that I have across my portfolio of software applications. In a further drill down, I can look at details at specific software titles. And in fact, I see that the Exchange server itself happens to be non-compliant right now in terms of its license consumption. Now, as we drill down into the details of my Exchange server software asset, I can also see the general compatibility matrix of various versions of this software. And this is all used for the discovery process to understand what licenses we have versus the actual consumption. I can, of course, look at the specific locations where these licenses are being installed and used. And most important for implementing our change, I need to find details about the licenses and obtain the key that I need. Now let's take a look at this license. I can look at how many rights I have purchased. And I could look at other details, such as the actual contract that was used to purchase these licenses. Here's a contract record, and also whether this is related to other contracts that I may have with the vendor. And now looking back at my license record, I can see that all the relevant license keys are stored here and are ready for me to use. Let's now move on to automation and see how this can help in the process of implementing our change. I will input the required information here in my change now that I've obtained my license key and proceed to execute the change. Now I can go to my plan and execution and I can see that a new automation task to generate and replace the certificate has been initiated. Let's take a look at the automation. The change executes this runbook automation, which will generate a certificate, stop our exchange service, delete the current certificate and move on to import the new certificate, restart the service, and if all goes well, we'll be back successfully with a running service. Let's take a look at how project management can also be used. Our change has performed its execution. We've updated the CNDV, we discovered that the service is back up. And now I'm gonna move on to the review phase on the review, I'll create a new task to initiate a continuous improvement plan. Here's an inbox of tasks that have come into that change group, and I can see the continuous improvement assignment in my queue. One useful tool at my disposal is this hot topic analytics that finds trends 
related to the types of issues that are being encountered, let's take a look at what kind of issues are coming up specifically against our exchange service. As I search for that, I can see that there's a number of issues related to access and login failures, certificates and updates, and also issues about people not being able to connect to email. And I with the amount of recent traffic and issues with the service, it's obvious that we need to do something to make it more resilient. As part of this task to find continuous improvement for the service, I'm going to create a new project. Here I'm entering the information for the project to make Exchange more resilient. We've been encountering repeated outages with email. Let's investigate options for setting up redundant failover servers. As I plan my project, I have at my disposal all the tools necessary to get things organized and executed. I can capture all the resource demand I will need to do this investigation. I've put in that I will need a DBA, a system administrator, and a project manager. I also have done my planning to execute with several timeline milestones. I will set up some infrastructure on Azure where I will implement the new server, simulate my failover events, and then launch a pilot on the Americans region. Under financial planning, I can actually track the cost that will take for the different subscriptions and find out how that compares to the benefit that is assumed by the business. As this project to bring redundancy to my exchange service gets underway, cloud and deployment governance will play a key role in making the project implementation simple and effective. As a member of the team in the project, I navigate to the service catalog and take a look at what services are under the cloud and storage management. As I need to locate Microsoft Azure database resources that will be used by this new exchange configuration. Let's request this service. And then I can proceed and fill out all the required details for this deployment. Once a request is made, I can track the availability of my service. Here I see my new Azure database deployment. And as I drill down, I can look at the various details of my subscription, the cost that I'm incurring, the actual history of when I requested it, other offerings for service of support of this service as is needed. Let's take a look as well at the new service under our service asset and configuration management application. This new deployment has generated a subscription that links the requester to the new Azure database. Within the subscription details, I can find out exactly when it was requested by the linked request. And I have a link to the actual CMDB view of the new database as it's being managed. I can drill down to look at the service and track information for it as the environment is monitored. If there's any automation or discovery events against it, those will be reported here as well. Now, this particular instance is modeled after a standard design. Let's take a look at the design under a service designer. Here we see the template for our deployment, which includes a Microsoft Azure server in the database and an SQL server schema that is all part of that single deployment. It is also useful to look at various insights on the broader leverage of cloud infrastructure by our company. A key aspect of the insights is all about cloud cost optimization. These insights help you understand how you might reduce cloud spending, specifically by relying on AWS or Azure reserved instances that can save you in the deployment costs. But let's not forget about that email I wanted to look at this morning and get back to that core issue and look at employee engagement. Good news is that I've made myself a new cup of coffee and my email is connected and working again. I received a notification on my mobile device letting me know that my issue has been resolved and was given details that the exchange service is back online. In fact, a new email was back because one of the first messages I received <laughs> was a survey notification for my IT team. Let me know. I'm going to fill out the survey, let IT know that it was very helpful to know the issue was not on my machine and that they would resolve it rather quickly. Now, employee engagement and feedback is always very useful and important to IT. One very useful tool is a hot topic report that looks at the different comments coming back from survey responses, the trends of what is in people's minds. 
we can see that a lot of comments here have to do have to do with fast responses to the solutions, or some are actually praising or talking about the agents involved. So with these reports, we can better understand where we're hitting the mark and where we can make improvements. And with this, we've come to the end of our life cycle demonstration of enterprise service management and the way a key service change can be supported by the enterprise. Thank you very much for watching.